Hey, Sens fans, what's going on? Welcome to another New Era Sens video. And uh, Jordan and myself, again, are here today, and we're doing something a little different again. Um, so we're going to be doing a prospect pyramid. We got this idea from Steve Dangle. He's been doing it for a few years. Um, it's a pretty basic term. Um, if you don't understand, it's just kind of, we have our pyramid with five tiers. Um, and so we're going to rank our prospects one uh, in tiers one through five. And so we're going to see the top players in the first tier and the not so great prospects down in the fifth tier. So uh, yeah, this is going to be really exciting. And I say we just jump right into this. Sounds good. Um, so at the top of both of our lists actually we're going to be doing them separate today um at the top of both of our lists we have a pretty obvious pick in jake sanderson so uh you want to talk a little bit about that yeah like i don't think it's going to be a surprise to anyone that sanderson is the top tier prospect on the list for both of us he's just kind of the jack of all trades defenseman that amazing skating like probably his best attribute amazing stick work defensively he's um, for a guy his age and to hop into college and be as good defensively as he was is incredible. And he's also one of the youngest guys from his draft class too. Like he's still 18. I think he turns 19 next month. Yeah. So he's got a lot of runway to work with. And he's one of these guys where the big negative against him when he was drafted was the offensive upside. Like what is his potential ceiling? But at the second half of the year in North Dakota really showed that offensively he can carry – uh, a team from the back end and can drive play. So I think worst case with Sanderson, you're getting like a top four defensively minded PK guy. And that's the absolute worst. Best case, you're getting the top two, potentially uh, the number one defenseman over Shabbat if everything goes because he has the defensive side of the game which Shabbat lacks. So I think he's an amazing prospect and potentially could be one of the better all round defensemen in the league. Yeah, I agree. Um, and for many of the same reasons I have him at the top of my list. Um, putting up 15 points in only 23 games in uh, University of North Dakota, that's fantastic for a guy yep. that doesn't have any offensive abilities. Like, all these people critiqued him and then watched him play. They didn't watch him play and then say, oh, well, he doesn't do this. He ju they just looked at the score sheet, and yep. he, he made it easier to look at the score sheet and notice this year. So huge props to him, and I, I think – like you were saying, at, at worst, we're going to get a top four defenseman. And I think at worst, we're going to get a Miro Heiskanen. I think that's like his floor almost. And yeah. that's fantastic. Obviously, his ceiling would be Kale Makar, which like there's not a huge gap there between Heiskanen and, and Makar. And that's because he's already there. Like not necessarily he has the same skill set as um, Heiskanen, but he's he's right there in this um, skill level at least. So. Yeah, for sure. And after the year he had at North Dakota, like all Sens fans are salivating at the fact this guy, like I think his points per game in production was very similar to McCarr's his first year at in uh, NCAA. Yep. And like he had his come kind of coming out party at in that five overtime game in the like uh, playoffs they did for college hockey, where he just looked like a man amongst boys and didn't get tired. And then you see like obviously the comparables were getting like need Meyer comparables getting thrown around and say, like, okay, now like that's a hall of fame top 10 defenseman. But if that's the ceiling for someone like that, then that's amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Like even just the comparison there. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, we can move on to our second tier. Uh, so for our second tier, um, I, I think we have a lot of the same names. Uh, I think there's one difference in here, but uh, we'll start yep. with Shane Pinto. Um, obviously, a lot of Sens fans are super excited about him. Um, another North Dakota prospect, and we're going to see a few more on this list yet. Um, but yeah, Shane Pinto, the face-off wizard. Um, we both have him in the second tier, so you want to talk about him? Yeah, like I think like you're going to see a trend here. There's a lot of North Dakota guys on this list. And Shane Pinto, I have in tier two because I don't think he has the potential to be the elite player that Sanderson has. But similar thing, like very high floor. And I honestly don't know his ceiling because he didn't start playing competitive. We've said this before until I believe he was 16 when he started taking hockey seriously. And ever since the draft where he was considered a reach to like, okay, no, he was a good pick. Now it's looking like he was a very good pick and a Hopi Baker finalist. Yeah. And he just – slid right into Ottawa's lineup and just looked like a seasoned player. Like, defensively, very good, used in key face-offs, defensively sound, and offensively, like, one goal, six points in 12 games, I believe. 
Yep. So pretty good offensive production from the guy in his first 12 games. Like no complaints there. And the ceiling just keeps to seems to keep going up and up. Like I don't know how good this guy's gonna get. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like people like me, I have him really highly ranked in my like where I think he's gonna end up in the um, roster. Like I think he has the capabilities to be as effective as Ryan O'Reilly is. He's not gonna play the same physical game, but similar to that effectiveness, maybe not quite as good, but yeah, just up there with that skill set. Um, and yeah, like you said, and one stat that you didn't uh, mention is his plus six on Ottawa in 12 games. That is oh, great. Yeah. And on top of that, his penalty kill abilities that he showed um, even in the NHL level already is just, this kid is amazing to watch. And I look forward to doing it for quite a number of years ahead. So no, I'm, I'm looking forward to Pinto. Like, looks like he's probably a lock to be on the team next year. So this is probably the last time he'll be on the prospect list. Yeah. But in another underrated part, like he is pretty big for his size. Like I believe he's six two, about two hundred pounds, one ninety five ish. And one thing that I think is a bit underrated is he is a right shot centerman, which other than Colin White, we don't have. Yeah. So that happens a lot. You see, like with White, he was on line with Paul. They would take different face offs depending on where the puck was. So having that right shot is just a better look on some situations. So. Like, you know, obviously he's a face face off wizard and probably will be one of the better face off guys in the league. And at worst, he's a third line shutdown center. So you always want guys like that on the team. And at best, maybe a 1C. Yeah, absolutely. And similar to uh, just in the comparison ways, I think his game is at least going to be what Pajot was for us. And yeah. it really hurts losing Pajot, but we just got Pajot back. And like, mm -hmm. yeah, it, it's. It's going to be a fantastic career for Shane Pinto, I think. Um, wherever it ends up, if it doesn't work out in Ottawa, which will be a heartbreaking day. But, uh, yeah, Shane Pinto has a fantastic skill set. Oh, for sure. Um, so, also in Tier 2 from University of North Dakota. So, this is the top three. Um, people <laughs> Surprise. <so> Surprise. <laughs> um, I've got right-handed defenseman Jacob Bernard Docker. Um, so, a lot of people had some frustration with his situation at the end of the year. Uh, he yeah. just kind of got played out for the toughness, which we didn't really need at the time. Like, we were lacking it, but it wasn't something that this team 100% needed. And yeah. I was all aboard uh, Josh Brown to protect Stutzel against Montreal and just all this stuff. But yeah. Jacob Bernard Docker was sitting for a long time um, and only got into six NHL games. But in the NCAA, he put up 18 points in, I think, 27 games. So... Again, the offensive upside is there. Um, he's more of like a very sound two-way player. Um, both of his both ends of the ice is somewhere that he can excel, and so we just we're waiting to see it in the NHL level. Yeah, for sure. And he's got good size for right shot, six foot. Like as you see in the playoffs right now, it's become kind of a theme. Both Tampa and Montreal's decors are just massive monster men. So having guys over six foot is seems to be important going forward. And he does play that. He can play that physical game, even though it's not his forte. But yeah, for him, like he's just steady Eddie back there, like good stick. He doesn't have the skating Sanderson has, but the defensive side of the game is just, it's already there. And offense upside is, I don't think it's going to be crazy high, but like, I don't think he's going to get power play time, which a lot of the production comes from for defensemen. Yeah. But having a right shot, just steady, guy that can play with Shabbat or Brandstrom, depending on where he hits. And he's not one of these, like, high floor, low, like, not low ceiling, but you know what you get in Bernard Docker. Like, I don't think anyone expects him to be a point-per-game defenseman. He just does everything right at all times. And next year, I do think he will start in Belleville, which I am fine with. Uh, just I'd rather him be down there playing top minutes than being the seventh guy on Ottawa. Yeah, absolutely. And I think... It'll suck to see him down in the AHL because I think yeah. his abilities are higher than that. But again, it's just about the fit in the room and just what's going on. Um, so, yeah, I do think that there's a good chance he starts in the AHL, especially with Pierre Dorian talking about going to get a, uh, a top defensive right-hand defenseman. So, yeah. Um, yeah, look out to see what happens with him at the beginning of the season. But either way, I think no doubt he finishes the season with Ottawa. Um, yeah, I think so. And I, I think he's going to be a great NHL defenseman as well. Um, so oh, yeah. for, to end tier two, we do have a difference here. Uh, yep. So I'll start with mine in Igor Sokolov. 
Uh, I think that he, Ottawa and Sen- Ottawa Senators fans love him, and it, it seems like the league is starting to love him. Um, obviously, he even has his own segment on the wall in the Thought Show now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so awesome. yeah, congratulations to him. Um, but yeah, he came into this league as a rookie. He was an overager when he was drafted last year, but, uh, he came into the AHL and just lit it up like 15 goals, 10 assists in 35 games is great for a rookie. Um, I think that's on pace to beat what Norris had last year and he won rookie of the year. So that's got to tell you something. Um, and he's pretty much an all, all shooting kind of guy, um, Obviously, the 10 assists, there's there's something there for his passing, but his shot is lethal. And I think he can come into this lineup next year, maybe. Um, might take a little bit into the season, but I do think that he deserves an opportunity in this lineup and c- with his shot can do almost anything. So uh, he put up uh, quite a few points uh, the year before as well. So you just the offense is there, and that's something that Ottawa needs right now. Uh, for sure, especially on the right wing, where he has a right shot. He can play both wings, but it looks like he probably will be a right wing just because the left side for Ottawa is, looks like it's going to be stacked going forward. And he so he'd fit in nicely on that third line in the next two years or so. And yeah, like I love Sock Club. I can't remember the last time a prospect has been this loved in Ottawa ever, Like other than like Tim Stutzler, who was a top three pick. Like when was the last yeah. time a fan base has got hyped about a late second? But, yeah, he just came into the AHL, and a lot of people didn't know how well he translated because he did very well in the queue. I believe he led the queue in goals. But, but he was a 20-year-old overager that was six foot four, two twenty-five. That's a big boy. And he came into the AHL, and like you said, he led rookies in scoring. And that was amongst, like, college guys that came in and that were, like, 24. So yeah. it wasn't just him picking on more young guys. Like, he earned his goals this year. And the reason I don't have him on the tier two list with the other guys is I don't think that up high upside is quite there with Sokolov. Like I see him probably more as like a third line power play. They like put him on one of the power plays, use the shot, use the size, and then just be a power forward in five on five situations. So I don't think the upside's quite there, but everyone loves this guy. I love this guy. So I just, I can't wait to see him next year. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so who do you have on your tier two? So I have Philip Gustafson, a goalie, which may surprise people because goalies are weird. But especially coming into this year, I felt like Gustafson was kind of not cast aside, but leapfrogged by Joey Decord. And Joey basically took the starting job with him or from him last year in Belleville. And Gus just looked like mediocre numbers if you looked in the stats. But this year, he came in due to Ottawa's weird goalie situation where everyone got hurt. And he looked like a number one starting goalie. And I think he had the second highest save percentage amongst goalies, like very limited sample size. But still, like the fact that he came in rookie year, played his first few games and looked composed, found out that weird thing about his hands, don't get blood. That was fun. Yeah. But uh, no, I just, I love the guy. And he has that high pedigree that the other, some of the other goalie prospects don't have. Like he was considered a top goalie prospect when he was drafted in 2016. And he was the – in the Broussard trade, it was him and the pick that ended up getting Bernard Docker when we got it from Pittsburgh. So, like, he was basically the start of this rebuild. So, like, I think yeah. we Otto has a lot of good goalies or goalie prospects, and I wouldn't be surprised if any of them become the starter or part of the tandem going forward. But I just love Gus, and seeing what he did at the NHL level means more to me than what he did at the AHL level last year. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I almost had him up on my uh, tier two. Uh, there's actually a couple goalies here in the next tier that I really wanted to put up in that second tier. But yeah. I think the other three just kind of stand out a little more to me. Um, so, yeah, we can move on to tier three now. All right. So uh, tier three, uh, we have a lot of similarities here as well. Um, so I'm actually going to start my list with Philip Gustafson, just as you talked about. Um, obviously, <laughs> his AHL stats before weren't fantastic. Uh, they didn't translate as well as like in his world juniors when he had a fantastic year. Um, but this year, he kind of stepped up a little more. In Belleville, he had a 5-7-1 and one record with a 9-10 save percentage and a, I think it was a 286 goals against. Um, yep. So not excellent numbers, but um, definitely production coming. Well, not production, but development coming out of him. But then when he got his stint in the NHL, like you said, he went five, one and two. Um, 
I think he had a 936 or a 933 uh, and a 216 goals against. And yeah, just yeah. fantastic stats in, for like a rookie in the NHL. Like he uh, on a terrible team too. Like this team mm-hmm. wasn't playing like the Tampa Bay Lightning. And so, yeah, I think Philip Gustafson definitely has the potential to be a number one goalie in this league um, for a team. Yeah, for sure. And and especially with his record, the one overtime loss he got credit with, like he came in an injury and I think he faced like four shots and yeah. lost in the shootout. So that, that also kind of sewered his record a bit. But no, I love Gus and like I completely get having him in the tier below mine, which I have Igor Sokolov. So we did a little swap there. And like I said before, the only reason he's not in the tier two for me is I don't see the higher upside that I'd like to see. Like I think he's going to be an NHL player. And I see him as a third line power play guy, like I said. But love the guy, love everything he brings, and personality wise, he's a gem. So I just the the guy's just so fun to root for, and like I can't wait. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we also have Lassie Thompson. He definitely took another step forward this year, um, and I believe we both have him in this list as well for yep. tier three. Um, in Belleville, he did a lot better than he has uh, in his time in the Liga. Um, he put up, I think it was 13 points this year, um, and which isn't the best part of his game at all. Um, he's more of a, a again, a two-way, kind of like Jacob Bernard Docker, um, also a right-handed defenseman. Uh, so I think I, I think the skill set is kind of the same um, as Jacob Bernard Docker's, but just it's not all there yet, and he's not as complete. Um, he has some things to work on in both ends. But I do think Lassie Thompson has the ability to take a few more steps forward and make this team and be a solid right hand defenseman on this team. Yeah, for sure. And it's, it was good to see him do, like, he did struggle a bit at the start of the AHL season for Belleville, but that was to be expected after having a really rough stint in Liga and then adjusting to the North American sized ice. And for a 20 year old, I believe he turned 20 during the season, to come over and be given top pair of minutes in Belleville because Belleville's decor was not great. Yeah. So like, I felt kind of bad for him being like tasked with all that, but yeah, like I, I like Thompson a lot and I think people kind of soured on him after his stint in Liga, but like watching Belleville games, he is very aggressive. Like he likes to go up and throw the big hit. He likes to move the puck up ice on his own, not really pass it, just carry the puck. So I think that's, also kind of a detriment to him where he does get caught out to make some boneheaded plays sometimes, which he should iron out. And, but he also has a great shot, which he didn't really utilize too much in Belleville. I would like to see that a bit more, but it is there. Like he does have a really good shot from the point. So I think the only reason I don't have him size someone like Bernard Docker is I think Thompson actually has a higher offensive ceiling than Bernard Docker, but much lower floor. Like I wouldn't be shocked if in three years, if he's still struggling to make the lineup. Yep. But while Bernard Docker, I'm like, he's going to be an NHL player probably by next year. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, exactly like I was saying. They have the same skill set. It's just where is he going to end up with his, like, what's he going to do with it? So yeah, um, really excited to see what's going to happen with him. Um, a- anything could happen. He could, like, he was the 19th overall pick. And you usually see around that pick, it's kind of a, a boomer bust kind of situation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we both also have Roby Yarventi in here, um, and he is a very, very interesting player. Um, I think even next year, you could tell me that you should have that I should have had him in tier two or tier six, and I, yeah. I wouldn't argue. Like this is the definition of a boomer bust player. He struggles. He struggled a lot with his defensive game. That got a lot better this season. Um, but his shot is just out of this world. Like, I, I don't know if Ottawa has another shot in the system anywhere. Like, I'm even looking at a guy like Norris and Dadanov and Sokolov and uh, all these awesome shots. I don't think any of them reach Yerventi's level. Yeah, no, I think, like, Sokolov is probably a harder, heavier shot, but Yerventi just has that, like, sniper, Mike Hoffman-esque quality where, like, and it's good to have these, like, zero calorie goal scorers on the team. You need those guys to put the puck in the net, which is what wins games at the NHL level. So yeah, I love Yarverty and looking this stuff up, I'm I always forget how big he actually is. Yeah. Like he is six three, I think one ninety. 
Yeah. yeah. He is a big boy. And if he fills the frame out a bit more, like he could be a very effective winger busting down the wing. So, no, I love everything he brings. And like you said, he, the boomer bust, very streaky. Like sometimes he looks invisible on the ice. Other times he takes over a game. Yeah. So wouldn't be shocked. Like the reason I have him lower is probably the same reason. Like if he hits, he's a second line power play specialist, like maybe like a Hoffman or like a Victor Olofsson in Buffalo. Like he yeah. will score goals. That's all he's going to do, but you're going to love him for it. But also wouldn't be surprised if, it, if nothing really clicks for him and he goes back to Finland in a few years. Yeah, exactly. And it's it, the transition is going to be the biggest piece. Like, it, what's his IQ going to be reading a much smaller ice surface? So I think having a shot like that, you can adjust really well because, I, I don't know, you, you don't have to be as accurate from as far away and whatnot, uh, yep. but also you have less room. So win-lose. Nope, yep. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. And I always forget that him and Thompson were teammates over in Ilves. Which they Ottawa were. loves their lo- they love their buddy buddy system. Yeah, except for Paterka. Couldn't couldn't draft him. Yeah, sucker Paterka. <laughs> um yeah, I, I would love to be able to draft him. Um but uh the next person we both have in here is Mads Sogard. And what an impressive resume so far. Um mm-hmm. and it starts off with his genetics. I mean he stands at like what, six eight now, I think. Six eight, two hundred, I think. Oh, that's ridiculous for him. Like he could just sit down and be better than Carey Price. Like, <laughs> oh no doubt. No. Um, Car- Carey, yeah, who? like, yeah, exactly. Uh, so Sogard came over from Denmark, um, and played in Belleville and put up uh, some pretty good numbers. I I didn't get all of the uh, Denmark stats that he had, but he played 16 games and finished with a 922. Um, that's all I could really find. Uh, but in yeah. Belleville, he went seven zero and zero to start his professional career, which is fantastic. Um, with a nine seventeen and a two forty goals against, I believe. Um, so, Mad Sogard comes in. He almost pretty much saves this team. I mean, Cedric Andre played very well. Um, I didn't actually include Cedric Andre on this list, but he'd be in the bottom two tiers for me. Uh, yeah. But. Yeah, Sogard kind of came in with all the injuries going on in Ottawa and said, okay, I want to turn, and it didn't share anymore. He just <laughs> took it and ran with it. Um, so, and I mean the flow, like the flow is oh, just yeah. fantastic. I almost wanted to put uh, Sogard in tier two simply just because he's this good but has the height. So I think Gustafson will be a more like agile goalie, be a better goalie, but Sogard has – the size that you can't teach. So I, I sure. almost wanted to put Sogard because he has the, the talent and more size than anybody could ask for. So yeah, I was in the same boat struggling between Gustafson and Sugard who to put higher or lower. And the reason I like uh, Sugard not quite as much is just because the Danish league isn't the best league, even though he did, great over there like you can only play the competition that's in front of you it still is yep. the danish league which i don't even know what the comparable would be maybe echl but no he does have a lot of room to grow too like he still is a young goalie i believe he just turned 20 a few weeks ago and like like you said he's massive six foot eight 200 seven and oh record you can't dispute that and his goalie stats goalie stats his stats were just tanked a bit there was a few late goals and kind of one-sided games that were just let in the last few seconds that ruined his numbers a bit but he looked great down in belleville a lot better than i thought coming over from the european game and the one thing i loved about him too was he's not afraid to go and play the puck behind the net which can be sometimes he gets caught making the wrong choice and getting burnt and also when there's a scrum in front of that he is not afraid to get physical and involved and just yeah. tower over these guys and just you are not going to push me around i am bigger than everyone here yeah exactly he i mean the size is very different but he plays like mike smith oh if he becomes mike smith that be my favorite guy i've ever ever had in the sense yeah I've, I've always like watching oilers games i always want mike smith because just the way he always gets involved and the way he always like, he's one of the best puck moving goalies there is obviously sometimes that has its downfalls, but um, oh, it's so yeah. fun to watch though. Yeah, it is. Like he sends it up to half, like to the red line, Breakaway passes. To McDavid and there there's a goal. Like it's so easy. Um, yeah. And it's most hash like goalie there is in the league. Like he's flopping everywhere and making it look, it works sometimes. I love yeah, it. Literally. Um, so 
you have one more in your tier three, uh, and then I have a couple more to add. Yeah, well, yeah. The last guy I have in here is really Greg, and I love Greg's game so much. I was tempted to put him higher, but I just the same thing with Sokolov. I don't think the ceiling is quite there. It's like a Pinto or uh, Bernard Docker, but I think uh, he worst case you're getting a third line just for check for check get under your skin you're, he's going to piss you off you're not going to like this guy which is a theme once we get later lower down in the prospects it's a theme with a lot of these guys you just don't like any of these guys to, to be on the opposing team but greg like he plays center don't know if he's going to be center in the nhl that still remains to be seen but he's going to like he's going to play he's one of these guys who are very high ceiling and like he said in the well, the draft comparable for him was Marchand, which is an amazing comparable. But he said that was a little too greasy for him. He preferred Kadri, which I don't know if that's better or worse for greasiness. <laughs> yeah, and but, I mean, his season in the WHL with Brandon didn't show that either. Yeah, yeah no, he, he did have the one suspension. suspension. Yeah, he got the one suspension early on. But still, he was top like top five, top ten scoring in the WHL, which a lot of people thought was – that like Greg was a bit of a reach or a pick at the time because the, the ceiling may not have been there. But he looks like everything that Ottawa wants in a player. Like, he plays that sense style so well. And he is a smaller guy. Like, I believe 5'10", but 160, so he does need to put on some weight to play at the pro level. But even when he played in Belleville, like, uh, Troy Mann can't stop raving about this guy. Like, he wants him back on the team to be, like, a top six center. And this yeah, is just exactly. a kid who also has a really late birthday. Like he's still, I think he's still 18, turns 19 in a few weeks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, I do think he's going to stay a left wing uh, coming into the NHL. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, like he put up the numbers, um, 32 points in 21 games in Brandon. And that's great. I, I think it was like three points in four games in Belleville. So even that's not bad for just coming in for seven games. So yeah. Um, and yeah, the toughness is there, the grit, the speed, and just it, he's he's in a Nazem Kadri shell. I don't know if he can grow to a full size though. So yeah, for for sure. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll see what ends up with uh, happening with him, but I do think that he has the potential to be a very fantastic part of this team. So oh yeah. Um. So yeah, that kind of finishes your list. Uh, My tier three is done. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I have three more to add, so I'll go over them quickly. Um, I assume you have them in the next tier. Um, yes. But I have Angus Cruikshank um, coming in from the NCAA at uh, University of New Hampshire. And so he came in uh, 18 points, 9 goals in 20 NCAA games, I believe. And he's just impressed me. And I I've done an interview with him. I've watched quite a few interviews with him. He's just such a smart guy, and he knows what he's doing, and he... Just everything is there for him. Uh, he came over to Belleville at the end of the season and put up uh, 11 points in 19 games. And so he he's showing that he can do it. Um, obviously, that's not great production, um, but it, it's not bad at all for what he is. Um, so, yeah, coming over from the NCAA and, just, again, playing quite a bit of that gritty style that Ottawa likes. Um, I'm really excited to see what Crookshank can do uh, in the professional level. Um, I also have Parker Kelly, and this is higher than most. He's at the end of this kind of tier. Um, I'd give him a three and a half if I could, because um, <laughs> the skill isn't there, but the work ethic and the effort and the IQ and just it's all there except for the talent i guess like he's he's like a nick paul um he's yeah. not going to be super flashy he's not going to score 70 points a season he's going to get his job done whatever his job might be like we saw nick paul play with brady kachuk and josh norris this season and mm -hmm. he did what he had to do on that line and i think that's what's going <laughs> to happen with parker kelly um and i do think he's also going to follow follow the nick paul uh development train and be like 23 24 when he comes into the nhl um, but yeah, Parker Kelly, someone to be excited for in terms of a solid filler, like a role player. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of those coming down below too. Uh, yeah. and then the last person I have here is pretty controversial, uh, but Logan Brown. 
And I think he deserves some credit because he does have all the talent and he's six foot five or six foot six. Six, um, six, yeah. And just a fa- fantastic abilities in center. He's had a lot of injury issues, which is really going to set him back. But um, he's 23 and hasn't found a home in the NHL yet. And I think to any other team, I don't even think we could get a third round pick for him right now. But to us, I think he's still an 11th overall pick that just can't stay healthy. And a lot of people talk about his work ethic, um, complete opposite situation as Parker Kelly. I think <laughs> I think it is there. It's just hard to see when you get hurt every game. Like it, It's hard to look like you are trying your hardest while you're probably a little bit nervous and concerned for your health. Like in reality, when you get hurt that much, there's going to, it's going to happen more often, just like Crosby with his concussions. Like it's just, it's how it works. So it sucks, but it's reality. Yeah. Okay. And then for tier four, we're starting, I guess I'll just start with a few of the guys you ended your tier with. So Parker Kelly, I have in tier four, just because like you said, the offensive upside just isn't there for him, but he has the work ethic. He's won the Jonathan Petra award twice already for the team for hardest worker in, in camp. So, He's going to be an NHL player, but I think it's probably just as a fourth line grinder, like an Austin Watson type, and at the ceiling, I like a Nick Paul guy that like you can slot slot in in and up or uh, in and down, up and down the lineup. So, like I love Kelly and everything he brings, and he is also 22, so he is a bit on the older side for some of these prospects. But he was an undrafted kid; like he didn't get drafted by the sense he was signed. So. For guy, for undrafted players, I always have a soft spot for because they didn't get that satisfaction of getting their name called on the on TV. So I'm always rooting for guys like him, and I w- I was really close to putting him up in the next tier with you, but just the offense upside is not quite there enough for me. Yep. And then for Crookshank, I was very surprised with, especially because he put up really good points at New Hampshire, but it's also not the best division of the NCAA, so I didn't know how much of that was weaker division and how much he was taking advantage of. He is tw- he's a 21-year-old, plays kind of center and wing. Probably going to be a winger at the NHL level if he makes it. And the offensive upside, I think, is higher than Kelly's. But he does both, like Kelly, has that pestiness, gets on the guy's skins, will drive the net. So I love both of these guys a lot, and I totally get it. And I was really close to following you. And then Logan Brown, I have down here, which and I'm a huge Logan Brown fan, which hurts me to do this because I've been tooting his horn for years now. There's no denying his talents. Like we all know this guy could still be a really good second line center if he puts it all together. But that's the big question right now with him. With all the injury history, like and I don't think any of these are like reoccurring nagging injuries. I think it's just something random every year. Like now it's his leg, now it's his back, now it's his shoulder. So that's the thing in off like he doesn't like even though he has the frame, six six, two twenty, I believe, and he doesn't really have the defensive game or the I don't want to say hustle, but the tenacity, physical game. For a guy's size, he's not too physical to be a bottom six guy like Nick Paul can be. That could be something he adds to the game if he realizes the injuries are going to hamper his skill. But that's why I have him lower down. And he may not even be part of this team going forward. He's a type that could easily be be packaged uh, to acquire some NHL-ready talent. So just get those guys out of the way since you already did a good job talking about them. So first new guy on the list. I have Joey Decord, everyone's former favorite goalie prospect before Gustafson and Sugard showed up. And I love Joey. He seems like, especially his interview with Kyle Bukakis after his first win, like he is just a gem of a human being. And seventh round pick, I believe he was Brian Murray's last pick when he was around. So that, yeah, so he does have a special place in a Los Angeles fan's heart. And I love the guy. But the reason I have him down here is he did have his stats at the NHL level this year. I think we're tanked a bit by that one Edmonton game where he led in like seven goals, where the team was just abysmal. But he did have that season ending injury. I believe it was a hamstring or an ACL. T- I'm not too sure. It was some lower body injury. But, and he is, he is older for goalies. He is, I think he turned 25 not too long ago. So he's at that point now where it's like, you're not really a prospect anymore. Like you should be in the NHL in some form at this point. So that's the reason I have him a bit lower than Gustafson and Sugard because of his age the injury history and also i don't want to get too attached now because a lot of people think he's seattle bait which yeah. at this point sally is probably not the worst thing because we have a crowded crease 
and someone eventually has to go. And I love Joey, but I just think Sugard and Gustafson have the higher ceiling at this point. Absolutely. Yeah. So then another guy who's horn I've been tooting, Vitaly Bramov, who he came over in the Duchesne trade that gave us the pick for Lassie Thompson. And he's a bit older too. He's 23. The reason I don't have him higher, unfortunately, is he signed in the KHL with his hometown team. So he's not an option for the next two years until – yeah, he's 25 when he come, if he comes back. Yeah. So there's no denying his skill. He's another one of these guys, though, that he's not going to be a bottom six guy. He's a bit like Yarvinty in that sense, where so much offensive skill. He is on the smaller side, though, and he doesn't have that dynamic skating that you want from the smaller players. But his hands are amazing. His shots, offensive awareness, everything you want from a skilled winger, he's got, except for the size and the skating. So hopefully he goes over to KHL and proves himself and Otto holds on to his rights because I love the guy and think he can be a really good top six winger. But we we'll have to wait and see because that's two years from now. Do you know if his uh, contract has an NHL opt-out uh, clause? I do not, and I probably should have looked that up. I, yeah, but, I don't know either. Um, I don't remember that coming out. So something to look Yeah, for. so yeah, someone to keep an eye on. Like I'm not too sure at this point, but I love Abramov. Loved him since he's come over and – yeah, can't wait. And then next on my list, the K train himself, everyone's favorite, Tyler Clevin. Another no deck prospect. And a guy that the Sens traded up for, which was a bit controversial at the time of the 2020 draft, because at the time I liked Clevin as a prospect, but I didn't see the worth for trading up for a guy like that. I thought you could have got him like late second, early third. But I had no issue with the player himself. Because as much as people say, like, this is a risky pick for guys like Yarvinti or Abramov, dra- trying to draft a stay-at-home defenseman is probably the riskiest thing you can do. Yeah. Because there's – if they don't – they have one job, be defensive, which is the hardest thing to do for a defenseman, a uh, young defenseman. And at North Dakota, I was so impressed by how much offense this, and skill this guy had. And six foot four, 215 – loves to blow guys up. If you don't be head up, he will wreck you, which yeah. we saw at the World Juniors when he was playing against Sweden, and he just crushed Philip Robick in the pace. And that is a highly touted offensive defenseman that just did not see this apparently bad draft pick coming. So I love Clevin, and watching his hot, like highlights, like he had toed, his first career NCAA goals just a toe drag snipe bar down. He had some spin ramas, some bank plays off the boards. Like this guy's offense, and I can see why Ottawa drafted him so high is because he was so raw. Like there is a world where he does not make it, which is why he is down here. And the offensive upside isn't like a Sanderson or a Branch or Shabbat or anything like that. But like this guy, if he hits, like he's just going to be a force out there, just terrorizing guys. Like some maybe like a David Savard, which, and I get why they draft him because these guys are a hot commodity in the NHL at all times. And people just, they always trade for them at the deadline. Yeah. So I love Clevin. And a fun fact, no, not so much a fun fact to keep in mind, is when Bernard Dock went down with injury at the end of the season, him and Sanderson were playing on a pair together. So they're both playing mm-hmm. right side. So if either one of them can transition to right side, that opens up a lot of options and flexibility for the decor going forward. Yeah, for sure. Okay, then a really forgotten prospect, which actually surprised me, is Jonathan Aspero. He was an undrafted guy out of the queue, 22 years old, so a bit in that Parker Kelly S tier. And last year, he was a bit buried on the Belleville defense court because the Ed guys, Branstrom was still there, Yaro Schwelan and Lajwa were all ahead of him. And a, fr- a free agent sign-in, like obviously he's not going to pass these actual prospects. But this year, with all those guys gone and Branstrom promoted, he yeah. became a- the Belleville's best defenseman. Like all situations, playing power play, penalty kill being aggressive, pinching, carrying the puck. And he had a very good season. So I don't know what the future holds for Aspero. Just because I don't believe he has a full NHL contract. I think he is on an AHL deal. Yeah. But I would love to keep him going forward. Because the left side, as much as we have the high-end uh, lefty talent, I don't think we have the left-hand def- uh, depth that we used to have with Willan and Lajra gone. So I would love to keep him around and think he could be a good depth piece. And then... These two guys I'm going to do together because I see them as a package is Mark Kastelich and Cole Reinhardt, who became yeah. an amazing, an amazing third line for Belleville this year. So both were overages when drafted, Kastelich in 2019, Reinhardt in 2020. And both these guys just suck to play against. 
Like they just seem like the worst kind of people, especially Castellich. Is Castellich reminds me so much of a Zach, a big Zach Smith. Yeah. And if he can become Zach Smith for the Sens, I will love him forever and ever. Because this guy, in low key, I did not realize he is a face off monster down in Belleville. Like he was the face off guy they went for in all situations. And he has the size. And Castellich had a bit more offense than I was expecting to see from like a six down overage pick to come in and be like solid third line with another overager. Love to see that from both guys. Both guys probably project fourth liners in the future if they make it. So yeah. that's why they're this low. And then Max Gannett, right shot defenseman, which everyone loves. Very offensive minded, plays with Val, uh, Valdor. And I actually didn't realize this. Like, Shabbat's kind of taken him under his wing. Like, you saw yeah. on social media, I think Shabbat went to his playoff games in the queue. And at Dev Camp, he was actually the one, like, the both Quebecois players. So they're hanging out together and he's teaching him how offensive defenseman to transition to the NHL, which you love to see. And for a seventh round pick from two years ago, they, you, obviously there's not much expectations for him. If it doesn't work out, whatever, a seventh round pick. But this guy actually has a, I think, pretty high upside. That I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a look. If he like a Lajwa, how Lajwa kind of came out of nowhere like a few years ago, I can see Gannett being that guy in like a year or two. Yeah. And then finally, to finish off my tier, I have Levi Marilyn and the goalie that came out of nowhere in the draft that no one even had ranked, and then he went on to dominate the Finnish Junior League, which it wasn't league good, it's the U20 league, but I don't think he lost in regulation at all. I think no, he, I don't I, think so either. I think he was 18 0 and 4. Which, yeah, it, it was something ridiculous like that. Yeah, which I know it's not the Liga, and but like I said, you can only play the competition in front of you. And Levi Marilainen has just like leapfrogged his way to probably be in Finland's goalie at the World Juniors next year. Yeah, probably. Yeah, and then he's a goalie, tall, lanky kid. Not much to say. Like I barely saw. Like I'm just looking at the numbers here. So goalies, you never know. But shout out to him. He finally got his picture on HockeyDB.com. So that was nice to see because his picture was not there before. <laughs> and Good. that is the, that is the end of my list. Um, yeah, I a lot of very similar names here. Um, so yeah, I'll just quickly go through mine. You already covered a lot of these guys. Um, so and I don't know if I mentioned this or not, but I'm not. This isn't in any order. That's why they're in tiers. They're just kind of this group of people is this rank. So if I have somebody yes. at the beginning of the list and at the end, it, that doesn't matter. Same here. It doesn't really matter. Yeah, it was just. The, the order that I had them wrote down. Um, so for my tier four, uh, I threw Johnny Tyconic in there um, just because I haven't completely given up on him. He's a very Tyler Clevin pick. Um, and I think the upside isn't quite there. Uh, like many people thought when he was drafted, I was quite excited about him once he was drafted, but I, I feel like that quickly fell off for a lot of people once he didn't really start performing. Um, but I, I think Tyconic definitely can revive himself um, in the Sens fans and make make a name for himself here. So uh, he's in the NCAA. I think he's committed to another year there. Uh, I'm not sure, though. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but yeah, so. excited for him someday, maybe. Um, Joey Decord, uh, like you said, everybody's favorite guy. Um, everybody loves him. Um he went to University of Arizona, I believe, just yeah. for the girls. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> like, I love Joey. Joey Decord is one of the most lovable he's guys. The best. Like you said, his interview with Kyle Bukakis, he's, he, he's such a lovable guy. Like, there's just nothing to not like about him. But mm -hmm. he struggled some this year um, after, and we're kind of seeing that in our system. Uh, Gustafson struggled last year, Decord exceeded flip-flop this year who knows what we'll see next year um, but yeah i i think decord decord is there with tyranny for me for who's going to seattle so it's one um, or the other it, it's one or the other or watson depending on how we protect our oh, guys um oh, that would be a heartbreaker but yeah i think joey decord it sucks to see him go but we have the replacements coming up um yeah. and especially with him being our oldest goalie prospect it, it makes sense um, to try and move on, maybe. Um, and then another person in my tier four is, uh, I'm probably going to mispronounce this, but Jakov Novak. I don't know if the think, J is I think silent. it's Yakov. Yakov, I, I thought so. Um, he played in the NCAA this year and had a pretty good season himself, uh, 17 points in 15 games. Um, I, I don't know a ton about him. Um, I know... 
that the offensive abilities are there ish. And especially for left winger, uh, he has an okay two way game. Um, it's not fantastic. It's not terrible. Um, it's just, he's a pretty sound two way player. Um, can get it done at both ends. So, um, I, I think he can be a bottom six guy for Ottawa someday. Um, mm, for sure. And then I also have Tyler Clevin in here. Um, a UND, just amazing things come out of there sometimes. Uh, so you never really know know what you're going to get with Tyler Clevin until we get him. So um, I, I trust UND's development. I trust Pierre Dorian, and I, I trust Tyler Clevin. Like he's one of the most trustable players there is because he has one job. Like that's it. Yeah. And I, I think Tyler Clevin can get it done. And I mean, he scored five goals this year. That's pretty good in 22 games, I believe. So yeah, yeah, good on him. Um, another defenseman I have here, uh, just like you had is Max Gannett, uh, from Valdor and 22 points in 35 games, I believe. Um, that's fantastic for a defenseman in the queue. Uh, and obviously, yeah, Thomas Shabbat got him under his wing. So he's got a great mentor to look up to. Um, yep. and I, I really hope to see Gannett make the NHL someday, because like you said, for a seventh round pick, nobody expects much. But I really think that the skill is there. And if it can transition to a professional, then he's got all the opportunity in the world. I mean, especially on the right side, we're not really looking for offensive guys. Um, but it, you never know. Like you're not going to sit him because he's too good and isn't the kind of player you like. I mean, unless you're Brandstrom. <laughs> oh, God. Um, so next in this tier is Vitaly Abramov. Um, same situation as you were talking about like he's going to the KHL again um, for two years. So that kind of sucks. And then he's getting on the older side of prospects, I guess. Um, yeah. I think he's 21 turning 22 this year. So, or is he 22 turning 23? I think he already turned 23. Really? Yeah. He was drafted in the same draft as Brown. He was a second round pick in 2016. Yeah, he was. Yeah. Wow. So I guess he's already 23. Um, and going to the KHL for two more years. I don't really see much coming out of him. Um, yeah. But again, the talent is there. It's just not working in North America. Um, so yeah, hope to see the best out of Abramov. Um, but yeah, I'm not quite confident in that. Um, next, I have Philippe Doust, who played in, <coughs> sorry, uh, played in the QMJHL. Uh, he played for Moncton and had a great season. Um mm -hmm. He was just over a point a game. I think he had 22 points in 21 games and uh, looked really good in both ends of the ice. And I live close to Moncton. I've seen quite a few of the games. They're always on local television. Um, so it, it's, I don't know. There's a lot to see in Doust. And I think that if he can transition it to professional, then there's a lot there. It's just kind of, it wasn't really there before now. So let's wait and see kind of thing. So I don't really have the yeah. confidence in him yet, but um For next sure. i have uh kevin mandalays uh he had an okay season this year he didn't get to play a lot of hockey there was a lot of goalies everywhere this year um in ottawa's organization at least um yeah but yeah mandalays put up a three and six record in nine games uh, i think he had an 888 save percentage and a 403 goals against um mm -hmm. it, belleville got lit up a lot and he played he mostly played at the beginning of the season, so yeah. um, it, it's understandable, but it, it sucks. Um, not a great record, not great stats, but I do think Mandalay's, again, right there with all the other goalies, has every shot to make this team. So um, so Mark Kostelik, uh, I also have on this tier. Uh, he, everything like you said, he's just the gritty guy, great at what he does, um, mm -hmm. role player, and he's great playing the role like he's not going to wow you but similar to pre i'm a god connor brown um yeah like he's just he'll play where you need him to same as nick paul and so uh, ottawa has a lot of those guys and i'm really looking forward to it and it's it's the same as victor lodine he has a lot more offensive ability um i also have him in my tier four uh but his offensive ability is very good. There's been some controversy around him with some drug use last summer, I believe. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, 14 goals, 26 assists in 47 games in the all Sven league. That's pretty good. Um, I, I look forward to hoping to see him get a chance in Belleville, maybe the year after next. 
Um, but yeah, anything can happen. And to finish off my tier four, I have a monster. Uh, I have a tree. I have Curtis Douglas. Uh, yeah. Six foot eight center. He put up four points in 11 games. And I, I would have him in tier five, but I have him kind of tucked away at the back of this because he's six foot eight. Anything can happen. Yeah, um, sure. It, that kind of physicality can do anything in the NHL. Um, you might be a fourth line guy, but if you have somebody that's six eight standing in front of the net, like who else is going to screen somebody like Mad Sugard or Ben Bishop <laughs> yeah. or yeah. like he, you got to have something. So yeah, maybe his height can get him a spot in the NHL. He's not bad, but he's nothing special. So um, for sure. Yeah, then so we have one tier left, and this is kind of the the rest of them. Um, it, there's not a lot to talk about here. Um, just some of the honorable mentions that I have uh, that were close to tier four. Um, Cole Reinhardt, you had him in tier four. Uh, I think he can. I, I think he can do it. As same as Parker Kelly, he can make it there, and it, as long as he keeps working. I mean, six goals, six assists in 34 games. That's not fantastic, but it's not bad. Like it's production, and so. Yeah. Yeah, a Tierney or a, a Paul, I, I hate to say it, but everybody is like Nick Paul now. Um, <laughs> Nick Paul is the new Mark Stone. Oh, um, God. Yeah. But yeah, so I have him, uh, Jonathan Aspero, like you mentioned. I think he definitely could get it done. I just don't really see it happening. Um, so yeah, it'll be good to see kind of some of these guys turn out. But to finish this list, I have Jonathan Davidson down here in Tier 5. Uh, Eric Engstrand, who I think he played the whole season in the SHL this year, didn't he? He might have played a couple games in the yeah. In I think Belleville. he played. I think he, no, I, he didn't definitely didn't come over to Belvoir. I think he played entirely for Malmo in Sweden. Okay, um, so yeah, he only put up five points. Um, and as a left winger, no matter what line you're on, you, you want to see more than that. So yeah, um, kind of bump that up a little bit. Maybe you have something, but I don't think much is going to come out of Engstrand. Yep. Um, so I also have Ollie Alsing. Um, I, he was on the taxi squad all year. Congratulations. Like it, he hasn't really <laughs> played hockey. Like it, I, I don't understand why you have one guy that just sits all year. Like I, I get it. You want to have the, some consistency and have a guy ready if he's going to need, be needed, but I don't know. I, I feel like you want to have him down playing a little bit more. Uh, he played 11 games, put up two assists, um, and then he's just signed over in Europe again. So we'll see what happens there. Not sure if it'll be much. Um, Zach Magwood, um, nine goals, zero point, or nine games played, zero points in Belleville this year. N nothing special there. Um, Jack Kopaka, Belleville, one assist in nine games. Not much there. More depth if we need. Um, and a lot of these guys, obviously nine games, four games, whatever, they need more time. Um, a lot of these guys can prove me wrong next year in a middle six role. So just putting that out there now before I get roasted. <laughs> um, Brandon Fortunato, uh, four games in Belleville, played the rest over in LA's uh, farm team. So not much there. He didn't put up any points in Belleville, not many over there. Uh, he was a seventh defenseman for Belleville, so that's yeah. got to tell you something. Uh, and then Luke Lohite played in the NCAA, five points in 30 games, so nothing fantastic there either. Like A, a lot of these guys are just what they are, um, and it, I don't know, because a, a lot of these guys, you don't really see their, them play much, um, uh, other than the ones in Belleville. So it's hard to picture what's going to come out of a player. Yeah, for sure. And just to finish off my list, I'll start out with the guys I actually have a few things to say about and leave the Fortunados for the end. But <laughs> I'll start out with uh, Kevin Mandelazy, who I have him as the lowest rated goalie prospect down here just because he did win Q goalie of the year two years ago. And he was a seventh round pick, so that was just kind of that was nice to see. But Belleville did kind of suck at the start of the year, but Mandelazy also wasn't great per se. So, and then, especially when you see Sugard come in, and with a similar Belleville team, he did, he went 7-0. and So, I, I know the teams were a bit different, but that's why I have him down in this tier. Then, Victor Lodin, 22-year-old, played in the Tier 2 Swedish League. 
and put up a lot of points. And he's one of these guys, similar to Yarvin T. If he makes it, he, it's going to be in a top six role for Ottawa. Highly doubt that. He is, like I said, 22. And he was on a team of, I forget this former Sens prospect, Jonathan, wasn't Jonathan, was it Jonathan Bergeron? Dolan. Jonathan Dolan. 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 Yeah. yeah. So I know that guy just loves playing over there and just, I think it's his hometown team. He just tears it up. So I don't know how much of that was Lodine being amazing and how much was Dolan just carrying him along. So I think he may be coming over to Belleville next year. We'll see. Yeah. But yeah, not much ex- expectations for him. Then I have Johnny Tyconic down here. Well, I don't really ha- see much from Tyconic, especially he's a left defense with Otto's left D going forward. And he transit. He was at UND. Like, I think he was initially drafted with the pick that when Otto traded back for Bernard Docker because Bernard Docker and Tyconic looked like they're going to be a D pairing at UND. Yeah. But for Tyconic, it didn't really work out, and he got transferred to Omaha, I believe. And it didn't really click there. He was in a 1D there. Like I think later half of the season was a bit better for him. But I'd like to see a bit more production from the guy on a NCAA team. Yeah. And then I have Philippe Daou, who I learned that's how you pronounce that last name, thanks to my dad, is Daou. Good but uh, <laughs> so... He had a good season, and the one thing that actually I kind of wish I had him on the tier higher, like you did, was he had 20, 28 points this year in 21 games. Last year, he had 29 points in six, what was it, 58 games. So, same yeah. point production in like a third of the games, pretty much. So, he's a guy to keep an eye on. I probably should have had him higher. And he is a center. I think he plays a bit of the wing. Don't know much about him, but guy to keep an eye on. Then, uh, this is why I have Curtis Douglas. I wish I could have him higher, but just because of the size. That's all that he's basically on this list for. Six for eight centerman. Love to see it. So, solid production in the bottom, like fourth line role for Belleville. Yeah. Then Yakov Novak. For, he's interesting to me just because he's kind of what Crookshank was to me last year, where he did really yeah. well at his NCAA school. But he, he was an overage during drafted. He's 22 right now. I don't think he signed. I don't know when his rights do expire. So I have no idea what's going on with him. But at uh, Bentley, he did well. And he's decently big for him. He's 6'3", 215-ish, 220. So it's an interesting guy to keep an eye on. Then yeah, Kopaka didn't really do much. He was – only thing about Kopaka, Jack Kopaka, is he was a high draft pick by the Ducks a few years ago. So maybe there's something there. And I think he's done pretty well in the ECHL. But – Depth, HO depth guy. Yeah. And for, Fortunato, he was traded for Good Branson. That says it right there. Like he's twenty, I think he's twenty five. I don't even know if he should be on this list. Yeah. Angstrand, big body, maybe a fourth line guy in a few years. Overager didn't do much. It, he's interesting because he he tears it up in the Swedish junior leagues. Yeah. So, but he's also massive. So maybe in the next few years he gets a bigger role for Malmo, but we'll have to wait and see. Magwood, just depth sentiment, didn't play much, didn't do much. And then a few of the other guys, all saying, I actually liked him when he played for Ottawa a bit. Like, yeah. first few games, like, definitely a bit rusty. But he's older, and he did sign in the KHL, so he's probably gone. So I'm probably going to forget about him in a few bit, in a little bit. Davidson, part of the – which I always forget that people apparently were more hyped about Davidson than the Bramov and the Duchesne trade which blows my mind to think about because Davidson could not stay healthy and he's back. He just signed in Sweden with his brother. Yeah. So he's not in Belvoir anymore. Low height, fourth line for Duluth and the NCAA, not much there. Late round pick and then the yeah, Fortunato, I said. So I believe that's everyone. A lot of those later guys, just AHL depth, it looks like, or late round picks that a lot of, a lot of people probably haven't heard of. Yeah, exactly. Um, and we're optimistic about these guys. Like some of these guys in the fifth and fourth tier that we said, like, oh, they have a good chance of making the NHL. If the, the, they don't, that's why they're in the fifth and fourth tier. But <laughs> yeah. like, we got to look at it optimistically and look at what do we Weather really have is. here. So, um, yeah, keep that in mind. Uh, if you stayed long enough to listen to us talk about half the guys that you don't know here in the fifth tier, uh, I really appreciate you staying and listening. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise this was a lot of fun, uh, and we're probably going to do a lot more stuff like this. Um, this, I had a great time doing this, getting it ready. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm sure once this is edited, it'll look fantastic. So, um, Hopefully. thanks. Thanks everybody for coming to, uh, coming to watch and thanks for joining me, Jordan. 
Yep. Thanks for having. It was great yeah, fun. So, uh, yeah, make sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Yep. See you guys.